then how did it turn from you're in Snarky Puppy and then it, I guess probably first epic records around 20, 2006 at least, and then about a decade later, uh, Fork puts out their second record and that's your first record. On, uh, the, that's their first record that you're playing guitar. Who came to you to join the band? Um, yeah, Mike just called me. Um, I, we were in a, a, <laughs> this store, a store in Houston with my wife and her family like shopping for Christmas stuff, I think mm -hmm. I want to say, well, it would have been Hanukkah stuff for them, but uh, yeah. And then Mike was like, Hey, uh, you want to be in fork? Mm -hmm. I was like, you mean Adam Rogers band that, that super group that very specifically contains Adam Rogers. And he was like, yeah, you want to be <laughs> like with him or instead of him? No, instead of him. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, sounds cool. <laughs> very easy decision. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's kind of how he is because he's always like juggling a million things. So I'm sure it was just like that had been developing for a while. I know that it was, you know, the, from my perspective, seeing them as a band, that was my thought. You know, this is a super group containing these people very specifically. But I think that Adams, she just didn't want, he didn't want to set aside like a ton of time for touring. And I, th I think he probably would have been down to just make records or whatever. But But Henry and Mike very much wanted to like be a real band and go on tour. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, at some point decided like, this isn't going to work. So, uh, so yeah, Mike, I guess that was, uh, what, you know, I was someone that Mike thought would be a good fit. And I had done a little bit with Henry, um, recording for, uh, Lucy Woodward and, um, New York. I like came up and, and, and Henry, I mean, like we kind of had this connection from early days when his band Rudder would play, we, we would, uh, play with Rudder, Starkey Puppy would play on tour with Rudder just a little bit. So we had that connection, although we didn't really know each other very well from that. So we kind of knew each other more from the Lucy Woodward thing. And he saw me in the studio and I was playing in rock bands. And I think compared to a lot of guitar players, more willing to like make weird sounds. Like I would just like turn my delay pedal up until it would feed back and do some wacky stuff. And I think that he, you know, for him, that's like a aha thing or, you know, this is someone who's not just going to like play clean jazz guitar. Yeah. So, yeah. So it ended up being a really, a really good fit uh, because both Henry and I are super interested in playing different genres and kind of unusual sounds. And that was, you know, a shared, a shared thing for us in the band. When you came in, you know, at that time, uh, that was when Mike League was still playing bass in it. And the kind of the Venn diagram of Fork and Snarky Puppy kind of overlapped. Once you came in, there's like a, you know, a significant overlap. Were you right. thinking like, how, how am I going to come in here and make this sound like its own band? Was there like a, a conscious effort beforehand? You're like, I'm going to play this way or we're going to do these certain things. So that way it's, it's different and doesn't sound, you know, like Snarky Puppy condensed. Was there a lot of thought that went into that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a thing that, ha that you have to think about. Um, and I think... You know, it wasn't too hard because right off the bat, like I, at that point, I hadn't written anything for Snarky Puppy other than this one song called Fair Play mm -hmm. from way back in the day that we never played live. So it wasn't like really a thing where it's like, I've already got this voice as a composer that's in Snarky Puppy. So anything that I wrote would by default be different from Snarky Puppy. Um, so, so from a composition standpoint, that wasn't really an issue. And then from a playing standpoint, it wasn't really either because I, I guess I've always felt like in Snarky Puppy, um, you know, you get you know, like your moment to shine and do some stuff. But the rest of it is very collaborative. Like anything I'm playing, I'm just constantly listening, especially to keyboards and drums and percussion and trying to fit what I'm going to do in with them and do cool things and play off of that. That's like to me, the whole thing with Snarky Puppy is that collaboration and improvisation. Um, so when you're playing with only three other musicians, like that's not even a thing at all. And instead, as the guitar player in that in that role, I'm basically like taking on the entire role of the horn section and half the keyboards. And, you know, so like I really need to step up and like have a strong voice. So that's a thing that I never really had in Snarky Puppy. So pretty much just the more that I leaned into like stepping out and having a strong voice in the band, the more that the band worked. and took it even further away from snarky puppy basically just a guitar led weird sound band doesn't you know even though it's also instrumental improvised 
song oriented, groove oriented. There's a lot of th- ways in which it's obviously like generally the same as Snarky Puppy, but like from a more specific standpoint in my brain, it never really felt like it was similar at all.